Good day. Thank you for tuning in to this general election candidate form for Legislative District 22, Position 2. The form is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County and TCTV. The League is a nonprofit, nonpartisan political organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League registers new voters, studies issues, and advocates for its positions with the legislature. Despite its name, the League is open to both men and women of voting age. My name is Allison Brooks from the League of Women Voters, and I will be moderating this forum. The candidates for Legislative District 22, Position 2, are Franklin Edwards and Sam Hunt. For this forum, candidates will have two minutes for an opening statement, and then I'll ask them questions in alternating order. The person first asked the question will have two minutes for a response, followed by one minute from the other candidate. There will be one minute for closing statements at the end. We will begin with opening statements from the candidates, beginning with Franklin Edwards. Mr. Edwards? Um, I guess it would be good afternoon. Uh, Franklin Edwards, uh, running for position two, uh, 22nd District, State House of Representatives, um, running against Mr. Hunt. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, my background is I've been a carpenter for 22 years. Um, I've never ran for anything prior to this. This is my uh, first go around in the election, you know, being a candidate in an election. Um, it's been a great experience. I've definitely learned a lot. Um, basically, I've been telling, you know, friends and other workers um, in the carpenter union, we need normal, just regular Joes running for office. And I finally got tired of telling them to run for office and decided to do it myself. And thank you. Thank you. Representative Sam Hunt, you have two minutes for an opening statement. Thank you, Allison. Uh, my wife Charlene and I have lived in the Olympia area now for over 30 years, and our two children and their families both live in the Lacey area, so we're strongly vested in the community. In the House, I serve on the uh, Appropriations Committee, the Education Committee, and I chair the Government Operations and Elections Committee. You know, our future and our children depend upon education, and education is the future. And providing quality education demands that we address our constitutional duty, the paramount duty to provide education. And we can no longer sit by and procrastinate, as I fear the legislature has done, and uh, which resulted in the Supreme Court's McCleary decision. We need to step up and address that and fund education. We have passed numerous major reforms to education. Now it's time to implement those reforms. And that's what I want us to do, and I will be working hard to do that. And yes, it is going to take additional revenue. We cannot fund education at the expense of other programs and, uh, and expect us to have a strong state government and safety net. As a former North Thurston School Board member and teacher, I think I have the experience and the qualities that make me a leader in this, and I have been a leader in this education reform movement. Another issue that's near and dear to us is state employees. State employees, as we know, have gone six years, as have teachers, without a pay increase. That's had a huge negative impact upon our economy. You know, 23% of the jobs and 31% of the income in Thurston County comes from state employees. And you add 3,800 teachers to that, that has a huge impact. So when we talk about helping our economy and moving forward, we can't do it without helping to provide the income for our state employees and our education employees as well. Thank you. And thank you. And we'll move on to the questions. The first question, uh, Representative Hunt, you'll have two minutes. What is your position on funding transportation projects in the governor's transportation plan? Well, we obviously need a transportation package. The, um, the House twice in the last two years has passed a transportation package. It got zero attention in, in the Senate. The Senate couldn't even agree on a bill, a transportation revenue package to vote out of committee. Thus, we're sitting at a stalemate. And, uh, you know, I strongly believe that we need a balanced transportation package that not only includes the gas tax, which is constitutionally mandated to go to transportation, but also additional revenues to to fund uh, transit, buses, and carpool lanes, and things like that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Edwards, you have one minute. 
Uh, yeah, the Senate definitely needs to work um, on getting the transportation budget passed. The only thing that I could see to help with the transportation project is on the taxation that we do on our transportation projects, putting those tax dollars back into the transportation budget instead of the general fund. Um, other than that, we definitely need to uh, work on the Senate side to get those guys to get us a transportation budget since the House has been passing it already. Okay, thank you. Mr. Edwards, you get the next question for two minutes. Can the state fund basic education without gutting the budgets of all other state agencies? They should be able to. Um, <laughs> um, there's a few things that, um, as far as our education that I think we should be able to do. Um, if the state raises the property tax a little bit and we also do um, some kind of uh, either a capital gains tax or a state income tax on people that are making over $500,000 a year in this state, I think that would help somewhat. It wouldn't completely cover the gaps in our education system. Um, I'm hoping that we can get the, a decent revenue stream from the 502 legislation that's already gone through and also put that all into education, which is where I think it should go to. It shouldn't go to any other projects besides um, education. And those are the only ideas I have at this time. Thank you. Representative Hunt, one minute. Well, I think we both agree that we need additional revenue to fund education. And when we talk about education, we talk about uh, early childhood, preschool, K-12, and higher education. You know, higher education has really suffered because it does not have a funding source. And it's been very easy to cut higher education and increase tuition, as anybody who is around college students and college families knows. So, you know, and our tax structure, I've said, for years is broken. And yes, I think we need to look at our whole tax structure, including looking at an income tax, eliminating the B&O tax, and uh, reducing the sales tax and reducing the property tax, and working towards a, a more balanced revenue structure that will provide us some additional funds to, to take care of K-12 education. But we cannot fund education with current revenues without gutting the rest of government. Thank you. So, Representative Hunt, you have two minutes for the next questions. What are your suggestions for enhancing an atmosphere of cooperation, compromise, and goodwill among our legislators? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, you know, I think if, if more of us could, uh, could work together, as, as Franklin and I have during the campaign, you know, we, we can disagree to disagree, or agree to disagree, rather, and uh, you know, when you look overall at, at the legislature, you know, 90 percent of the bills that we pass, pass with probably 90 or more votes. So there is a lot that takes place. The ones that get the coverage in the press and get the attention on, on the media and in everything is a bill that creates a vote that breaks along partisan lines, be it uh, the budget or, uh, you know, or to the transportation budget or various other things. But, you know, it just takes time and we need to take the time to walk across the aisle and, and work with the people. Representative Rakedahl and I worked on a compromise on an education bill this year that was supposedly dead, dealing with the increased hours for, and graduation requirements credits for, for high school kids. The last two days of the session, Rake, Ms. Repter, did, I can't even say that. Representative Rakedahl and I worked on it. We got the bill to the, to the floor, and it passed with, I think, two dissenting votes in the House and, and two dissenting votes in the Senate. And it was because we walked across the aisle and we talked to some of the Republicans about what they wanted in that bill, what would bring them to yes, and we managed to get them to yes, and then we took it to the Senate, and I worked with the uh, leaders for the, the Democrats and the Republicans on education issues in the Senate, and they agreed, and we got the bill passed. Sometimes it's just as easy as sitting down and talking with people. Thank you. Mr. Edwards, how will you work in the spirit of cooperation and compromise? Um, not to kind of jump off of where Mr. Hunt was at, I think I, I believe that talking to the other side, because at the end of the day, I honestly believe that whether it's Republicans, Democrats, independents, no matter who it is, that we all, at the end of the day, want our state to be great and want things to be better for our citizens and our constituents. So it's just, I think it's a matter of just going over and talking to them and seeing their views and your views and where they come together so that we can make sure that legislation passes that's good for our state. 
Okay, next question, Mr. Edwards, you have two minutes. If elected, what legislation would you propose to address potential health property slash environmental hazards of high magnitudes of coal and oil trains passing through our state? Oh, that is a good one. Um, I have really not put any thought into that, to be honest with you. Um, I know I've heard a little bit about it. Um, and I know they've been uh, transporting some oil, uh, some oil and coal since as early as April, May of this year. So, I mean, it's going on now. Um, the biggest thing is we just need to hold um, the railroads and the companies transporting that stuff accountable for any kind of issues that may be there or may come up and make sure that we have the proper emergency procedures in place so that if something does happen that we can definitely minimize the impact on the environment because those particular products could be devastating to Washington State's ecosystem and our our whole fishing industry and crabbing. So I definitely think we need to figure out something to make sure that our you know our ecosystem, our wildlife and our waterways are definitely protected. Thank you. Representative Hunt, you have one minute. Well, I have an easy way to protect it, and that's not to increase the number of coal trains and, and oil trains going through the state of Washington. I signed on with a group of Oregon and Washington legislators over the proposed uh, coal port in Oregon that the Oregon uh, state government recently refused to permit for. I've also been working with Dow Constantine, the King County executive and his group on uh, a freedom from, from coal trains initiative. I just think that the damage to the environment, not only here, but shipping all that coal abroad to have the mercury and other fumes that come from that blowing back across the Pacific is something that we don't want to do. We should be working for a clean environment, not for something that further clouds the horizon. Bad pun, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and Representative Hunt, you get the next question for two minutes. Do you think the legislature should work with the issue of state mental health care in the next session? And in what form would that take? Well, I think the uh, Supreme Court has made it very clear on that issue, too, in the uh, way that it said we can't house mentally ill people in jails and other places where we have been. We need to address this. You know, it was in the 1980s when the federal government backed off of support for mental health care that a number of people with mental health problems have been driven to to the streets, to jails, to various other places. And and we need to. The state is working now to find additional hospital beds and, and treatment beds for these people. And you know, we need to we need to continue to work on that. I noticed the court yesterday, the Supreme Court gave the state a little more time to deal with this because it's difficult to, to just go out and create the facilities. But I think in time, and it will definitely be a possibility or a, a priority for the legislature in the next session. Thank you. Mr. Edwards, one minute. How will you work through the mental health issues? I have nothing to add. Sam covered it all. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Um, so, Mr. Edwards, the next question is, do you support gun registration initiative 591 or 594 and why? Um, I don't have a problem with the background check of the bill. Um, I don't like some of the ways it's uh, written in there with the family members and, and some family members that aren't included in that portion of it. Um, I think the legislature itself could come up with a better bill than the 594 one that would cover any loopholes that we do have. Because um, the way that it's written now with the 594 and the 30 day waiting period and having to, what it does, it's gonna turn our gun shops into, it, they gotta accept the firearm and then they've gotta take it in their possession and then they're gonna have to do a federal background check on it itself to make sure it's not a stolen weapon and then by the time the 30 days comes up for the background check. I just think it opens up a whole can of worms that would make it very difficult for um, our citizens to acquire weapons if they choose to for hunting or whatever their recreation may be. Um, I also think that the waiting period and the way that it's written would also affect, um, you know, if you got domestic violence victims that, you know, need to purchase or borrow a firearm from somebody, a, f a family friend or something like that, this bill would make it so they wouldn't be able to do that. Um, but other than that, I think the legislation themselves could come up with a, a better solution to this than the 594. Thank you. Representative Hunt? No, thank you. I, I strongly support 594, and I will vote against 591. It's very interesting that we have two competing initiatives on the same issue on the ballot. Uh, 
we have tried for a number of years. I think the last four years I have co-sponsored various bills to do background checks, and we can't get them through the legislature. It's uh, too hot a topic, I guess, for many legislators to deal with. And uh, so the result of that is, and that's why we have the initiative process as a backup, when the legislature fails to act or acts in a way that people don't like, they can propose and get signatures on an initiative. And, you know, no initiative will be perfect, and that's why it's better to do things by a bill, because you have the hearing process and the amendment process. So I'm willing to, uh, to support 594. I think overall it's, it's a good bill, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, once we get it implemented, we will, like everything else, do some fine-tuning on it. Thank you. And last question. Uh, Representative Sam Hunt, two minutes. How will you fund state parks? Oh, boy. That's been the ongoing question. We have struggled and struggled with, with funding state parks. And really what we need to do, and it's the same as we talk about education, about mental health, about transportation, you know, we need to increase revenue coming into the state. Uh, the director of the Office of Financial Management has been going around the state talking about various presentations. If we had not had the Iman initiatives and the economic downturn, of 2008, we would now have $15 billion more in the state budget to deal with education, middle health, state parks, and things like that. And we have so crimped the state government for lack of revenue that we've gone to, you know, various ways to try to deal with funding parks through driver's license purchases and that sort of thing. But what we really ought to do is step forward again and look at our whole state revenue process and rework it and come up with, with a revenue system that actually funds state government and does not uh, depend upon tricks and turns in order to fund the various programs. Thank you. One minute, Mr. Edwards. State parks. How will you fund state parks? Uh, I have to agree with Mr. Hunt on that one. We just need to rework our tax structure so that we can fund what we need to fund in this state, like our schools. And we definitely need to increase our funding for our higher education, too, um, for our in-state students who want to uh, attend either UW or the other one. <laughs> but other than that, that, uh, that would be uh, what I would see. We definitely need to rework the tax structure in the state. Thank you. And now we will have closing statements, one minute each. And I will start with Representative Hunt. You have one minute for a closing statement. Well, thank you, Allison. And, uh, and, and thank you, Franklin. It's a pleasure to talk with you and work with you on the, on the campaign trail. And uh, I'd like to thank the voters of the uh, 22nd District for electing me a number of times to this position. It is a position of honor, and uh, it's nothing that we take lightly. We have a huge burden to, to represent the people of the district and the state and to try to come up with a way to address K-12 funding, higher education funding, and to maintain our safety net. And that's something I want to continue to do in the next two years. And for that, I would ask your support. Thank you. Mr. Edwards, one minute closing statement. Oh, um, I would uh, love your support, and I would do everything I could to uh, make sure I was looking out for our constituents. Um, I definitely want to, I just say ditto to Mr. Hunt, because <laughs> except for the part that I haven't been elected, um, and I haven't had a chance to serve our community yet in that um, aspect, and, but I would love to. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching today. Again, I'm Allison Brooks with the League of Women Voters of Thurston County, and we urge you to join us. Again, we are a nonpartisan organization, and we bring issues forward in programs, and we do forums such as these. We're open to men and women. So please join us, and thank you to TCTV for hosting this forum. Thank you. Thank you.